Ah, uh, this is unfortunate. Not because it can't happen, but just because I don't expect it to go down for the Baltimore Ravens. And what am I talking about? That will be them landing a Devontae Adams. Just thinking about him with the Baltimore Ravens. This is a conversation that we done had before. Uh, but when you see what they would have to do, the hoops that they would have to jump through in order to acquire a Devontae Adams, that's just not something that the Baltimore Ravens typically normally are willing to do that's not the type of chance that they are willing to take that's not the type of money that they are willing to spend especially at that position but let's look at the details Brian McFarlane Raven salary cap he let the world know exactly what the Baltimore Ravens would need to do in order to acquire a Devontae Adams but why are we even having this conversation now well it's because a story dropped today that Devontae Adams may be available for trade officially now because before we all heard rumors about him possibly being traded from the Raiders but it didn't happen and the coaching staff shut it down but now apparently uh, the Raiders are looking for potential suitors for Devontae Adams even the head coach went on Instagram and liked the post that said has Devontae Adams played his last snap for the Raiders and when I saw that I said whoa the head coach even get involved in it too like that like that that would be like like, if Mark Andrews, if, if a post came out and said, has Mark Andrews played his last snap for the Baltimore Ravens? And that'd be like John Harbaugh logging in from his actual account, not just his burners, but his actual account and leaving a like on that post. But anyway, uh, with Devontae Adams, it was asked by Dems on Twitter. He asked Raven salary cap, Brian McFarlane, who knows any and everything about Baltimore Ravens money. He asked him, he said, what type of salary cap Tetris would have to happen to make this work? And then he said, I fully understand there is maybe a 5% chance of this happening. So he, he knows already, you know, like, like this, this ain't stuff that the Ravens normally do. Like, this ain't no, uh, but anyway, Brian McFarlane, Ravens salary cap, he said the following. He said, if they want to badly enough, they can find a way. And I, li I like that. I like how he started off. Started off like, hey, if Ravens want to make it happen, they can make it happen. And that's what we say all the time if Ravens want to go out and get some more talent if they're really serious about they can always make it there's always a way to get it done but anyway continuing he said uh but this will require two things number one Raiders would have to eat some of his 13.5 million dollars remaining salary okay that that sounds doable and that ain't even nothing outlandish or crazy or anything that the, the Raiders would have to do in order to move off of Devontae Adams Hey, nothing but what else he said and the Ravens would need to extend his deal. He's due 36 mil and 37 mil in 2025 and 2026. Woo. Talk about backloaded. Whoa. That's, that's. <laughs> Raiders say, all right, Devontae, we tried it. Hey, well, okay, you can go now, man. Go find somebody else to get it done. Uh, and he said, those numbers are untenable. He'll be 32 then too. So he'll be a little older. Like, I mean, him being 31 now, like that's. I might be a little too young for the Ravens to go after, but anyway, no, I'm just playing around. But um, with Devontae Adams, those numbers are significant. And continuing, he said, it's tough to sell to extend a 32-year-old wide receiver, even one as good as Adams, at $30 million per year, in my opinion. Could just add void years and restructure, but would likely need Adams' agreement to do so. Not sure he would because he's likely looking for more security than just the two remaining years of his present deal. So he's saying, like, if Devontae Adams were to get traded, like, he would have to agree to have a restructured deal. He would have to agree to them to just move some money around to fit uh, his deal under their salary cap and just change the way that it is. But he's saying that they wouldn't really add any real years. They could add some void years on the back of it to sort of spread it out but they wouldn't really add any void years or any real new money in that deal. And he said it, it could be hard for Devontae Adams to really be feeling it like that. Like, oh, y'all going to trade for me and y'all not really doing much as far as adding money to my deal? Like, he may not even go for that. But even before it gets that, to that point, uh, I, I just I don't think the Ravens would even go for a move like this. Uh, and then you got to think, too, um, what would it take, even though I don't think this would be an issue, what would it take for the Ravens to acquire a Devontae Adams? Uh, I don't. I think what he get traded for, from Green Bay to the Raiders, I think it was like a third and fourth round pick. It was, it was something like crazy. I remember looking at it like, what? That's it for a Devontae? What? It was, I, I remember it just being so, so, so crazy. So now the fact that the Raiders, they're sellers right now. They're not buyers, they're sellers. So it's going to be one of those things where I, we'll take what we can get let the highest bidder 
let them take Devonte Adams off their hands because it really does seem like they are very ready uh, to move on from Devonte Adams. But with the Baltimore Ravens, um, I just don't see it going down. Uh, unfortunately, I, I just do not see it happening for all the reasons that Brian McFarlane listed. Like it's like, look, he um. He's great. Now, and now it's come out from Ian Rappaport. Just now it says that Raiders star wide receiver Devontae Adams informed the team that he prefers to be traded. So it's a matter of time, man. It's a matter of time. Now, something that is a little scary. Um, he ain't going to the Chiefs. I don't think he's going to the Chiefs. They ain't doing no in-season, in-division trade because you know usually the Chiefs are a team where it's like oh anybody come available especially with Rasheed Rice probably out for the season especially with Hollywood out for the season like they were to get a device and of course you know they were using perfectly and all that and all. oh my god it would be so annoying but they're in the same division with the Raiders I do not think the Raiders would be that desperate in order for Devontae Adams to get out of there uh, by trading him to an in-division rival. But then you got teams like the Jets. That's a possibility. You know Aaron Rodgers always looking to have his boys on the team. He, he always looking out for his boys, his old receivers and whatnot. He's always like, hey, y'all come wherever I'm at. Y'all come through. Then there's the Steelers because Cordero Patterson, when he saw the interview that Devontae Adams did uh, on the K. Adams show, he tweeted. He said, oh, it sounds like he wants to be a Steeler. And the Steelers, they, they got some money to play with because – they ain't paying nobody like that. I mean, they just pay Cam, Cam Hayward and whatnot. Obviously, T.J. Watt getting paid, but they ain't paying too many people like that because you your, your quarterback situation, because normally the quarterbacks, they take up all the money, but Russell Wilson get paid like a million dollars in change from the Steelers because the Broncos are paying the majority of his salary. Justin Fields is still on his rookie. Like, so the Steelers, that would be a team where if they were to get... <laughs> that would be an issue. But as far as the Baltimore Ravens, I just... I don't know. I, I just don't see it happening. I, I would love for it to go down. I would love for the Baltimore Ravens to make something like this happen because I don't want them just adding a receiver just for the sake of it. Just to say, oh, okay, we did it. And it just be anybody. Like, at this point, and again, this is a conversation we've been having for years, but they should have been done something of significance at the wide receiver position. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. They're going to be like, hey, what? What, what about our running game? You ain't, you, what about our running game? You see how strong of a running team that we are? You see Derrick Henry last week, he got 200 yards. The week before that, he got like 150 yards. We're good. We don't need no wide receivers, baby. And no, I, I would disagree because while we loved the past two games, the way that these past two games went on the ground for Derrick Henry, he's been killing it. Not every game is going to be like that, unfortunately. Not every game he going to go for 200 yards. Not every game he's going to have all these touchdowns. Like We would love if that happened, but it's not realistic. So stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Um, with Devontae Adams, we talked about this too when the rumors came about, about DeAndre Hopkins. Um, if you have a receiver like a Devontae Adams, the respect is there around the league. Everybody knows who Devontae Adams is around the league. Like, like we talked about earlier, like Ravens, they just got to see how good he still is at this point in his career just a couple of weeks ago. So it wasn't like his last season or two seasons. No, they literally just got to see how great he is a couple of weeks ago. I, if you go back a couple of years, I don't know if y'all remember. I know Ravens team was all beat up. They were hurt, so they were down to a lot of backups. They had just picked up some people who were free agents to play cornerback. And the secondary was rough. But I remember, I, I have never, have never, and still have never seen this be repeated. The way that they play defense against Devontae, I've never seen him play defense like that against any receiver in my life. Never. The way that they tried to cover Devontae Adams, it was the, the, the craziest thing. And he still got his. But the Baltimore Ravens, they obviously have a deep, deep, deep respect for Devontae Adams and his game. We should have would have had a little more deeper respect for him a couple of weeks ago because they would have had more bracket coverage on him and really try to take him up. But it happened. It is what it is. But um, I just I, I don't see it going down for the Baltimore Ravens. I don't see it happening for the Baltimore Ravens because it's just sim something they simply just they don't do that. They, they they don't do that. And I would love for them to sometimes jump through some hoops and whatnot. Now then you 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 get to the conversation where if they were to add a receiver like this. 
How would that impact the offense? And would it be worth it? Because if you're paying a receiver 30 mil per year, <laughs> you ain't paying no receiver no 30, 30 mil per year to have one or two catches or four targets. No, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So that part of the conversation, I get it. I get it because if you got a receiver getting paid 30 mil per year, oh, oh no, that receiver, he need to be a big part of your game plan. And we've seen, especially these past couple of weeks, and again, I, I don't agree with trying to fix something that's not broken. If the run game is working, let it work. Let it work. Make everybody's job easier. If it's working, keep up with it. And that's what the Baltimore Ravens have been doing these past couple of weeks. But the receivers, they've just been, they been chilling. They've been blocking. Like I think last game, what, Zay Flowers had one catch for 10 yards. Uh, Rashad Bateman had the one catch for, what, 20-something yards, I think. Uh, he also had that drop in the end zone. Zay Flowers also had that drop on the sidelines. But there weren't many opportunities for the wide receivers. And again, the run game was working. But with uh, those guys aren't getting paid a bunch of money. Zay Flowers not getting paid a bunch of money. Rashad Bateman not getting paid a bunch of money. So I'm sure Ravens are cool with that. But if you bring in a high-priced receiver, that could change a lot. Now, it could change it for the better because it makes your offense it just adds another weapon to it. But... Simply because of the way that the Baltimore Ravens run things, pun intended there, but the way that they run things, I just, I don't see this as something that they would do. As much as we would love it, as much as we would like for it to happen so much, it's just not very Baltimore Ravens-ish. We got the unfortunate news out the way, but what about some positive news? What about something that is really like, I love it. And that's the fact that Lamar Jackson, when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens run game, he's getting a lot of significant help. And he right now is not the Baltimore Ravens leading rusher for the first time in I don't know how long it's been. And it, there's a significant gap between him and the leading rusher, who is, of course, Derrick Henry. Let's look at this. It says the Ravens have two of the top 10 rushing leaders, Derrick Henry. Is number one in the league. A lot of people said he was washed. A lot of people said he fell off. But anyway, Derrick Henry is number one in the league uh, with 480 yards. And at number nine, with still a significant amount of yards, Lamar Jackson, he has 308. Something that um, we, we talked about a lot, especially this offseason, when it was rumored that the Baltimore Ravens were looking for a running back that had pedigree, that had a good name to him, that was established, that was a veteran, that somebody that was like that. Um, we thought, man, could this be to where Lamar Jackson may not have to lead the team in rushing anymore to where they can get like le legitimate help for him in the ground game? Because we know like it's Lamar Jackson is asked to do so much. And, and a lot of times we don't even realize it. We don't even realize the type of toll that that can take on. So cause you're doing so much every single play. If you're obviously the lead in passer, but also the lead in rush of the team, that's a lot of work every single game. But now we have a Derrick Henry to really alleviate that off of Lamar Jackson. And with Derrick Henry, I know a lot of the conversation, too, with Derrick Henry, um, especially especially the first two games. We're losing a lot of conversation change when you, versus when you're winning. But a lot of people say, oh, man, we should have just kept, kept Gus Edwards. We could have saved some money and kept Gus Edwards. He can do everything that Derrick Henry can. But when you watch Derrick Henry and the power that he has, like Gus Gus used, I feel like Gus used to have more power. Then he lost a little bit of weight. He, he, and he did lose some power. He was not weak. He ain't become weak when he lost the weight, but he just wasn't the same as before. But Derrick Henry just different, man. He just, and that ain't no shot at Gus Edwards at all. Derrick Henry is just different. I, I, and it's the craziest thing. I know the, um, the comparison came up between him and Xavier Worthy as far as their top speeds. Xavier Worthy's top speed obviously was faster than Derrick Henry, but Derrick Henry was just like a notch under Xavier Worthy. And I'm like, How? How does somebody that big run that fat? It just does not make any sense. But get this. It says that Derrick Henry has hit 20 miles per hour more than any ball carrier other than Tyreek Hill since the NFL's next-gen stats started tracking players' speed. That don't make no sense, man. And But that makes Derrick Henry and the Baltimore Ravens offense that much more Dangerous. That's why they always say, oh, you always heard about it. Like, hey, Derrick Henry, you just got to keep keep feeding him. Keep feeding him. Keep giving him them opportunities to break. 
And we saw in the game <laughs> on the Sunday Night Football against the Bills, he just needed one opportunity. He broke 87 yards to the house, man, to the house. Like, it, during that run, I was thinking, oh, man, this is a big run, but I thought he was going to get caught. Nope. He hit it, man. He got it. And he, he just been, and then he broke a couple of other big ones, too, especially in the Dallas Cowboys game. And he broke another one in the Bills game, too. So Derrick Henry is showing, like, don't be fooled by his size, man. Don't be fooled just because he's a giant. Like, this, this dude is, like, crazy. The size is crazy. He's a monster. He's an alien. Just because he's that huge, it does not mean that he is slow by any means. So with, with Derrick Henry, I just I, I, I love what he's brought to the Baltimore Ravens, and I love what he's taken off from Lamar Jackson. Now, I feel like we cannot put like an exact number on it. Like Derrick Henry needs to have this amount of rushing yards, and Lamar Jackson needs to have this amount of rushing yards. But like Lamar said, whatever it takes to win. And there was a tweet that Lamar uh, a couple of days ago. He said, this is a team sport. I'm not out here satisfied when I th threw for 300 yards but took an L. He said, if I throw for 50 yards and we win, that's what matters. Y'all stop commenting on our socials about the yards. Y'all fan dudes or parlays ain't hit. Then he put the thumbs down. So Lamar let it be known like, look, I don't care about none of that. I don't care about the numbers and whatnot. I just want to win. And like Lamar said a couple of weeks ago too, which I really appreciated. He, when somebody asked him, oh, Lamar, you dropped your shoulder against the Chiefs, and do you think you, you, you're going to be able to do that for a whole season? You think you're gonna? And he said, look, I don't care. I want to do whatever it takes for my team to win. So whether it's passing, whether it's whatever it takes, and that's what I'm on to. Now, I thought we got all the bad talk out the way, but not yet. Well, depending on who you ask, for some people, they have considered this good talk. But anyway, Sports Illustrated, they said that Ravens tight end Mark Andrews could be a name to watch as a piece that could get shipped out of town. So they're saying Mark Andrews could possibly be traded during this season now we've had several questions from subscribers that have talked about that and some people have been down for that they like look move mark andrews move him off get some draft picks or get another player get a receiver get what not they are ready to move on from mark andrews but i've been thinking like man like no we got mark andrews got isaiah likely we got charlie cola like we, we we could do some things with those guys still especially isaiah likely and mark andrews but the, again can't sleep on charlie cola as well like when he caught that 30-yard pass the other day, so okay now. All right, Charlie, let's go. But anyway, back to Mark Andrews. What's interesting about this, what's interesting about this report is that this didn't come after the Bills game. This came days before the Bills game. So it wasn't like it was like, all right, Mark Andrews ain't do nothing against Buffalo. Yep, get about No. This was before that game. But after that game, it certainly didn't help anything because he didn't have no catches in that game. He certainly had a drop, though, but he didn't have any catches at all and for the past two weeks like he has not been involved in the game plan whatsoever now y'all know me i've continued to say like look trading mark andrews no I, I want them to ride this season out with mark andrews because marlon humphrey has been a name that a lot of people talked about trading and mark andrews has been another one. but i'm like no i, I don't want to keep both of them for this season now next season i think that's when business could come into play especially when it comes to marlon humphrey like they drafted a corner in the first round uh for a reason because it's the future not saying that marlon humphrey is bad but it, because of the future and that's how the business just goes. You draft somebody, especially in the first round, because you expect that person to eventually be the replacement for somebody who's in front of them. But as far as Mark Andrews, like one person who definitely is not a fan of trading Mark Andrews, it's Lamar Jackson. And he let that be known because uh, on Instagram, somebody commented, uh, FYL Sean, he said, Mark Andrews got to go, man. Got to go. And Lamar Jackson responded. He said, please stop talking for us. Stop talking for us. So Lamar Jackson let it be known, like, look, I don't want Mark Andrews going anywhere. He needs to stay right here. But something that I was thinking about, because um, y'all know, again, I, I, I do not think the Ravens should trade Mark Andrews, uh, but it's like stuff, you get to thinking about stuff, especially when Mark Andrews is not really involved, even though he was out there blocking his little behind off the other day or the past two weeks, but still um i just i just like him being there i like having him as an option there but um something that my guy noah said uh, a, a couple of days ago when he sent in a question from team keep it clean he said the best time to sell is when you think is when you don't think you need to 
And I was like, whoa, that oof, that's a that's a very powerful quote right there. Um, but with the Baltimore Ravens, like people could be I'm sure Baltimore Ravens, like teams are looking at them. And they're looking at Mark Andrews and the, the lack of impact that he's had in recent games. And they know what he's capable of. They know what he can do. So I'm sure teams have been thinking. And I, wa- I wonder, this is just my thinking. I ain't heard nothing or anything like that. But I wonder if teams have even been calling about Mark Andrews. Just to see. Just to put out a little filler to the Ravens and EDC. Like, oh, it, is he available? But I, I still I still want them to keep him. But I'm wondering, depending on how things go over these next couple of weeks, could that be something that they would actually entertain? Now we have me. Now we have my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. So team, keep it clean. Let's hear from y'all. First question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, "You already know you about to get at least fifteen questions about trading for Devontae Adams, but I'm going to say no." Ooh, that boy said no. He said the cap hit will be significant. I'd rather go for D Hop, who might be cheaper. <laughs> Might be <laughs> Of course DeAndre Hopkins would be cheap And what's crazy is that last year um, DeAndre Hopkins The production it, it was not very far off From a Devontae Adams But in my opinion Baltimore Ravens If they were to get an established receiver Like either one of those two Or somebody else You're not In my opinion You're not bringing them in for production you're not bringing them in to put up uh, 150 receiving yards per game I mean that would be nice but that's not what you would bring them in for you're bringing them in to open things up for other people of course for them to make plays first and foremost but for them to make plays and open things up for other people and for playoff time guys that can be relied on guys that you can count on not even just for playoffs but regular season too when hey the run game is being stopped and you got a pass. I mean, Ravens have already shown they can do it. But to have yet another weapon to, to again, help bring out even more of, from Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would be for that. But, yeah, with the price tag that Devontae Adams is, I'm not saying no. But I think EDC and the Ravens would. Should we be fighting for justice? Next question came from my guy, David. He said, hey, Raven and all the team, keep it clean. I hope you're all doing well. My question is this. Let's hear it. Uh, I know we're all excited for Keaton to return this season. But... Is Keaton really better than Justice? I know Keaton's burst onto the scene with some big plays in his speed, but Justice shows just as much big playability, in my opinion, and looks to have just as much burst and explosiveness. Uh, I, I don't think he has... He got burst and he got explosiveness for sure. Justice, he'll be doing his thing. He doesn't have it as fast and as quick as a Keaton Mitchell does. Like, when you look at Keaton Mitchell, like, Keaton, that... Whoo, Justice Hill is... Whoo, Keaton Mitchell, whoo, like, they, they're close. But Keaton Mitchell is just, he's on an, a, a, another level. And again, Justice Hill, he's up there too. But because he, he was the fastest running back in his draft, Justice Hill was. With Keaton Mitchell, um, I'm not sure where he measured against other people. But we, we could see it on the field. Like, he, he got it. So, it ain't no slight at Justice Hill at all. Because Justice Hill, he's been killing it. Especially the fact of week more opportunity, he's been doing his thing. But Keaton Mitchell, like, that boy is blazing. But anyway, uh, continuing, he said, uh, Justice Hill... Uh, looks to have just as much burst and explosiveness, good hands, and he has the freaky ability to stay upright. Justice looks to be the perfect complement to Henry, who not only isn't fool's gold, like I said in my early question, but might just be or uh, just might be diamond crusted. Uh, their chemistry seems good, and each under each and each understands their role. Truly, thunder and lightning. I'm excited. I'm excited for Keaton, but we saw how it got when we were trying to do running back by committee and feeding three backs. I guess it comes down to did Keaton actually earn a spot over Justice or was he just the hot hand? Well, it was a little bit of both. That he, he certainly earned a spot on the team because you saw what he did in the preseason. It was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Unless you're talking about that he earned a spot over Justice right here, right now. Well, that would obviously be based off of last year because the Ravens know what Keaton Mitchell is capable of. Now, um, you, that is a good point as far as uh, really trying to feed three backs. You got to go with the hot hand. You got to go with what's working. But with Keaton Mitchell, whenever he does come back, whenever that's going to be, it ain't like it's going to be, all right, Keaton Mitchell's back. Derrick Henry, you number one. Keith Mitchell, number two. Just no, no, no. He would be eased back into the lineup, eased back into the rotation. It's still going to be Derrick Henry and Justice Hill as the one and the two. But Keith Mitchell, him, having Keith Mitchell as a third running back, that ain't bad at all. But he ain't just going to come back right away and be starting or even be the second string. Uh, he said, seems like everyone has already given him the RB2 spot and moved Justice to special teams or something. I don't know. I just don't want to get caught up chasing player hype and ignore what's proven on the tape. 
Keaton Mitchell proven on the tape. It's there. Look at all last year. It's there. But again, like like I said earlier, I, I wouldn't expect him to come back and they'd be like, all right, Keith Mitchell, you take it all the way. No, they, they would ease him back in. Next question came from my guy, Derek. He said, Engraven, I didn't realize how fast Bateman and Zay are until that big burst by Derek Henry where he took it 87 yards to the house. If you see Bateman and Zay at the line of scrimmage, you see they're kind of still in their respective spots, not doing too much crazy moving, just a light jog or so. However, as DeMar Hamlin and the rest of the Bills secondary are behind our king, and they're past 50 at this point. Uh, mind you, the run started at our own 10. Suddenly, I mean suddenly, Zay and Bate as fast as lightning, literally right there behind them. They're no Tyreek or Hollywood, but Ravens flock, we do have quick receivers. I was like, wow. Because think of how fast Derrick Henry was going in the Bills secondary trying to catch him. Bate and Zay are still both far behind with the rest of the offense. Then just catch up with all that speed. Sheesh. I, I didn't even notice that. I didn't, I didn't even see that. I, I just remember the run, and all I saw, Derrick Henry – Outrunning DeMar Hamlin and the rest of them Bills, uh, safeties and defenders, cornerbacks, line, everybody, and just celebrating while he was going to the end zone. And it was the best, man. It was the best. But special shout out to Zay Flower, special shout out to Rashad Bateman, because that was a game that really didn't involve them that much. Again, like we talked about earlier, Zay had one catch for 10 yards, and, and then he had a drop. Rashad Bateman had one catch for like 27 yards, and then he had a drop too, but he got negated because of the defensive holding, but still, he could have had a touchdown. But they were not involved heavily. Uh, it was a big run game, but you did I didn't notice any like bad body language or anything like that. I ain't know they weren't pouting, shouting, screaming like, oh, where my catch is at. Even though you know inside they want to be involved. They want to receive, of course they want to be involved. Of course they do. Receivers, tight end, any pass catcher wants to be involved with the, any skill player, skill position player, they want to be in, even though every position takes skill, but every skill position player, they want to be involved in the game plan. They want the ball in their hands, like the running back, wide receiver, tight end. So, you know, those guys are on the inside. They're like, man, I, I really want to do more for the team. I really want to help it. But at the same time, it's a win. So I, I appreciate their effort when it comes to blocking, but I also appreciate their effort and their attitude.